Hello and welcome to another episode of Keeping Up with Kendall. Hi, my name is Dr. Tony Cruz. I'm the campus president here at the Kendall campus of Miami-Dade College. And we're coming to you from the Learning Commons at the Kendall campus. And today we have a special guest with us, Brittany Bassant. Brittany is the president and CEO of Chamber South. Welcome, Brittany. Thank How are you? you? Thank you so much for having me. Well, it's great to have you here today. And uh, I have some questions for you. So we're going to go ahead and jump into I've those heard. questions. <laughs> I've heard. <laughs> staring we're, at we're gonna, we got staring at the questions, so we're going to get to them right now. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, your academic journey, your professional journey, so the audience gets to know you a little Can bit I better. I go all the way back. Like, I was born in this beautiful little country of Trinidad and Tobago. No, but actually, that is a huge part of my journey. I was born and raised in Trinidad, mm -hmm. and I moved here to Miami when I was 14 years old. Um, so I went to Miami-Dade County Public Schools. I'm a proud... Uh, a graduate of the Miami-Dade County Public School System or a proud um, product of Miami-Dade County Public School System. And then I went to the University of Central Florida in Orlando for uh, my undergrad. And it was supposed to be, I was supposed to go to law school. That was always the plan, mm -hmm. right? I went there for political science with a focus on pre-law and the plan was to go to law school. But I, you know, figured out a little late yeah. in my college career uh, that that wasn't what I really wanted to do. It was kind of what my parents wanted me to do. So sorry, mom and dad. Um, that that didn't pan out, but yeah. I moved back to Miami and I really honestly fell into the lap of a not-for-profit organization, the Everglades Foundation. Mm -hmm. So quick plug for the Everglades Foundation, amazing sure. organization that does great work here um, protecting our local Everglades. And there's a huge campaign right now, out right now that the Everglades Foundation is really trying to educate our local community on the fact that our drinking water here in Miami-Dade County and in South Florida actually comes from the Everglades. 95% yes. of people don't know that your drinking water comes from the Everglades, so that's why it's so important to protect that natural reserve, but that's a conversation for another day. Sure. So I fell into the lab of the Everglades Foundation. I was doing not-for-profit work. And to the kind of person that I am, I fell in love with it. I mm -hmm. mean, I was like, oh, I can work for a mission, I can work for a vision, I can work for a cause. Mm -hmm. That changed my whole view completely. So I really became a not-for-profit girl. Okay. Worked for the Everglades Foundation for a few years, worked um, in politics, as so I was like, well, let's give mm. this political science degree a world. So I worked, <laughs> I worked for the Miami-Dade County Board of County Commissioners, which mm -hmm. allowed me to really understand the relationship between public-private partnerships and understanding how the government can really assist you know, our local community and get involved with some of those initiatives. Sure. And then went back to the not-for-profit world at the Daring Estate Foundation. And then when I was 28 years old, um, Chamber South kind of reached out to me and asked me to be their president wow. and CEO. And At I 28. Was, I was 28. Wow, I was 28. I still yeah. think back on it now, and I'm like, that's honestly, impressive. what were you doing? <laughs> what, what were you doing? Um, but I think they kind of knew what they were doing, and they wanted, you know, chambers of commerce are kind of very traditional, and, and mm -hmm. somewhat, some people might say that they are outdated organizations, mm -hmm. and we are here to change that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think they kind of knew what they were doing, bringing someone that was very young into the role, and that's kind of my 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 all of my experience in the not-for-profit world and in the political mm -hmm. world really just came together so beautifully to be able to, to be at the helm of Chamber South and been doing that for five years. That's awesome. So I noticed it's been, I think it was just your anniversary, yeah, right? Your five year anniversary. Five year anniversary. So congratulations Thank on that. You. Thank you. And uh, I know we met through the Chamber, so, um, you know, people, again, Chambers, right? I mean, for some people that means something, you know, uh, Chambers of Commerce, for other people, maybe not so much because I, unless you're in the business world, uh, it may not mean anything to you, but so I want you to kind of talk to the audience a little bit about uh, Chamber South, ex particularly, right? What's the mission, and maybe some of the objectives, and some of the initiatives that are going on right now that you think separate it from other chambers, or just make it really important for individuals to get involved in the chamber. Absolutely. So we're going to do a little bit of like quick chamber history. Mm -hmm. um, so like back in the day, there was a time where you could not be a business owner, a reputable business owner, without being a member of your local chamber of commerce, without having a better business bureau rating, and that really changed with the evolution of our technology and our, our online digital world now. Mm -hmm. So instead of you know calling your local chamber of commerce to get a recommendation for a local plumber, you just go on Google and you just right. find the one that you want. So really when I say that some people do view chambers as being outdated, that's kind of the reason why, is that we now mm -hmm. have this huge digital world and you could do so much online and so much virtually, like a lot of people really um, are, are think that there's no value to that face-to-face -face networking, mm -hmm. but there is, there's a huge oh, yeah. value. For sure. um, so Chamber South's mission, as all chambers of commerce should be, first and foremost, there are about a dozen to 15 different chambers of commerce in Miami-Dade County, 
And contrary to popular belief, <laughs> we are not competitors. We are collaborators. Um, we all work together. All Collectively, the mission of a chamber of commerce or for multiple chambers of commerce should really be to promote local economic growth and development. Sure. That's really what we're doing. And whether you're doing it for a specific geographic area, like Chamber South, we service you know, the South Miami, Pinecrest, Palmetto Bay, Cutler Bay, and Kendall mm -hmm. regions, or you're doing it for a demographic, like the South Florida Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Regardless of what area you're servicing, mm -hmm. it is just to make sure that our local businesses have opportunities to help them grow, to help them connect with other businesses. And it's really just about being local. You yeah. know, shop local, dine local, drink local, support your local economy. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, and, and it's been hard. It's been really hard to talk the past few years without bringing up the COVID pandemic. Sure. But I think that was a great um, tool in helping the community at large understand the importance of local businesses and local mm -hmm. mom and pops. So that kind of did a lot of our work for us in mm -hmm. terms of like, it's really important to support your local businesses, but that's really what the chamber does. We, um, we are here to help you grow your business, to help you connect with other local, whether it's other local businesses, other local leaders, with just the members of the community at large. Right. And so I kind of just kind of gave you the, the short version, but really the chamber has three pillars. Business to business, business to government, and business to community. Mm -hmm. And those are the things that we do. We connect other businesses to local businesses so that you are, you know, you're supporting your neighbor, you're supporting your friend, you're supporting the guy who's right. in the PTA and your, his kids go to your school with your, with, with your kids. You know, you're supporting like your community. Um, the Chamber South or the Chambers of Commerce can help connect you to your local elected officials, your local um, politicians, local leaders. And so if there's an issue that you're having, whether it's, you know, with your business or there's a pothole in your front yard that you need sure. help getting fixed, you know, call us. We have that direct contact. And then, of course, connecting you to your to your greater community. I'm a big not-for-profit girl. That's my background. Mm -hmm. So I make sure that our chamber members and the community, they really know what local um, init not necessarily initiatives, but local philanthropic groups are here, like, mm -hmm. you know, carrying that torch for issues that are close to their hearts. So, you know, everyone, everyone loves something different. I'm a big, I'm a big mm -hmm. environmental and, and uh, an animal girl, but everybody has a different cause that they're passionate about. So making sure that you know, like, what is being done locally to help champion that cause. Um, and that's, that's I think you need a fourth pillar. <laughs> What's my fourth business pillar? to education? Business to education. Yes, yes, absolutely. Your fourth pillar. There we go. <laughs> See, this is why we have these conversations. That's right. Absolutely. But yeah, we can absolutely explore that. I mean, it's just really at the end of the day, if you told me, you know, describe what you do in one word, mm -hmm. it's I'm a connector. That's mm -hmm. it. We just help you connect. So whoever it is, I'm my my job is amazing. I love my job. I have. So I'm a huge fan of Ron McGill, mm -hmm. and I know we're going to talk about the zoo. I'm a huge fan of Ron McGill, and Ron McGill, I, I watched him speak at this event recently, and he was like, I have a scam going on, because when you get to do what other people pay to do, you've got, like, the best scam in the right. world. And I'm over here like, hi, Ron, like, me too. Yeah. You know, because I genuinely, genuinely wake up every single day, and I get to go to work, and I get to meet incredible people in our community, mm -hmm. and I get to help them, and it's incredible. It is by far one of the best jobs I've ever had. Well, that's great. It's amazing. That's yeah. great. Any new initiatives? Anything? I mean, that's the so those are that's the mission, the pillars. Anything you want to highlight that the the chamber is doing right now? I think right now Chamber South is just in a growth period. Okay. Um, so we're really just building up. You know, our our numbers this year and our growth trajectory this year mm -hmm. has really taken off. That's great. So our membership has doubled from wow. years prior, and we are actually actually no, I think we've surpassed it. So we this year has been our most successful year in terms of new members for the past 10 years, which means that we brought on the most number of new members this year than we have in the past 10 years. Um, so that's huge. You know, we're really growing. Mm -hmm. um, our events have quadrupled our, in terms of the attendance. And so right now we're just focusing on building up the organization. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to do a campaign about listening to our members and finding out what it is that they want. What do mm -hmm. they want from the chamber? Mm -hmm. What is it that they want to see? You know, chambers have committees and they have, you know, we host the events, we host the committees. We do, you know, we do things throughout the sure. year. But is that what you want? Is that really, you know, when I talk about chambers being outdated in some regards, not necessarily being outdated, but being perceived as being outdated, perceived, yeah. how do we change that? Mm -hmm. And part of that is by listening to the community and listening to the members and finding out what it is that they want to see. So if there's something that you want me to do, like a <laughs> business to education pillar, that's why we have these Little conversations. Pillar, pillar. No, they're all the same pillars. They have to be the same height so they can hold up the organization. <laughs> um, and so, that's something that we can discuss and that's something that we you know we do strategic planning sessions with the board once a year and mm -hmm. that's something that we we listen to the community we find out what it is that they're looking for mm -hmm. and we find find ways to implement it so that we make sure that our initiatives are 
strategic yeah. and, and they just they make sense and you're not just throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks, but you're actually coming up with a structured plan of how to engage and how to do more for your community. That's great. We love what you're doing yeah. and connecting <laughs> people to the community and the businesses and, and to others in the community. Yeah. Um, and I know that you have a, a lot of involvement with the Miami Zoo. Yes. And uh, so I know you're involved with other other organizations as well, but let's just focus right now on, on the Miami <laughs> on Zoo. The zoo. <laughs> on the zoo. Uh, you have a great love for animals. Yes. And so share, share with us a little bit about that, about your love for animals, uh, how you're connected to Miami Zoo, and anything you want to share about that. Absolutely. Um, so remember when I talked about like my being born in a small little remote Caribbean island. Um, so when we moved here at 14 years old, mm -hmm. my parents were, they told me, you know, in order for you to assimilate into American culture, and they were very, they, they are very big on volunteerism and giving back to the community. So in order for me to assimilate properly, you need to volunteer at a local organization. And they okay. gave me two choices. They gave me the zoo or a nursing home. Okay. So I'm so sorry to the nursing home, but I picked the zoo because uh, right. I was 14 years old. Mm -hmm. So I started volunteering at the zoo and I volunteered there for a grand total of, I think, over a thousand hours wow. during my high school career. I was actually a Silver Knight nominee oh, yeah. um, because of my just my volunteer service at the zoo. At Killian. At Miami Killian. Really? Let's, let's make Miami that a shout out to the Cougars out there. <laughs> Yay, go yeah. Killian, go okay. Cougars. Yeah. Uh, Miami-Dade County Public Schools, sure. absolutely great public school system that we have here. Um, and so I had over a thousand hours, volunteered, and then I went, you know, I went away to college and, you know, I always stayed in, in touch with the zoo and annual member and, you know, kind of like the basics that you can mm -hmm. do. But when I moved back, I wanted to be more involved. I didn't right. want to be a volunteer. I don't want to be, you know, on the, there on the weekends, you know, handing out guides or, you know, talking about the birds in the aviary. I wanted to do something more. And so I was able to find out that the zoo had a somewhat dormant young professionals program called Wild Bunch. And okay. um, that's always Sounds a fun, fun name, right? <laughs> that's, that's a really interesting name for <laughs> but okay. Pro yeah. tip, always put Zoo Miami before you Google Wild Bench. Right. So please Google Zoo Miami Wild Bench if you're looking to get involved. <laughs> Do not Google Wild Bench and say I told you to. Um, so yes, I found out they're, they're somewhat dormant not, um, young professionals program. And of course, being the person that I am and then the personality that I have and, and the leadership and the like, let's get this going and, and the passion really that I have for the zoo. I got involved with the young professionals group mm -hmm. and then um, became the chair and served for wow. chair as two terms. Okay. I was actually like, I, I got involved and I'm like, okay, so like, what's your structure? Like, we don't have any. I'm like, well, you need a chair, you need a executive and you said, I'll be chair. And like, I'll, I'll structure the whole thing and I'll do it because really, and I think, I think really with anything, with any organization or with any group or with anything, it's really only as good as the leadership, right? It's really sure. only as good as that person that's carrying the torch. When you have a strong leader that has that passion that can really say, you know, hey, this is my vision and this is this is what I want to do and you have people that buy into that and they follow that like that's that's hugely important mm -hmm. especially when you're working for not-for-profit groups because they're always so understaffed and they're always doing 500 million things at once sure so I did that with the zoo I was their chair for for two years and by virtue of being chair of the professionals group I was given an ex officio seat on the board of directors for the zoo which was like dream career wow. goal ever I when that call like came in and even if it was an ex officio seat I was floored because yeah. um, that was something that I had always wanted. Um, so then when I rolled off as chair, I, I, of course, you lose your ex officio seat when you're no longer in the position that was mm -hmm. given the ex officio seat. But I also received a call from the zoo saying, hey, we'd love for you to be on our board of directors and also serve on our executive committee. Wow. And again, I was absolutely yeah. floored. Um, so it's really been an incredible, incredible journey with Zoo Miami to be able to give back to an organization that I really feel has molded me in a lot of different ways. Like it was the place that I that I fell in love with when I first moved here. You know, it's hard. I was 14 years old. Sure. I moved here. I was so fun, fun fact, in Trinidad, like, I went to a convent, an all-girls convent, run by nuns. Wow. And then I moved to Miami, and I went to Miami Killian. Yeah, that's so a again, whole, I'm not, two different worlds, <laughs> completely different worlds. I'm not yeah. knocking Miami Killian. I love, yeah. I love my alma mater, but <laughs> it was a culture shock. Yeah. And so the zoo was a place that I could really retreat to and, and find that peace and, and find that connection. Mm. And really, it was, it, was a, it was a scary time. I was 14, and I just moved to a brand new country, and I really didn't know mm -hmm. kind of anything or, or much of anything. Um, so I really, it is a very special place. And so being able to serve on the board of directors, being able to serve on their executive committee, being able to, you know, get involved with that organization. And when you think of zoos, and first and foremost, I will say, like, mm -hmm. I'm going to say 100% on record, 
not all zoos are equal. Not all chambers are equal. Sure. Not all things are equal, right? So I cannot st stand here and sit here and advocate for zoos in general. I can only do that for Zoo Miami because I am intimately familiar with mm -hmm. the organization. I know the behind the behind the scenes and I know the work that they're doing and I know their policies and the procedures and I know their certifications and I really understand mm -hmm. this organization and they're one of the best. That's great. Um, and I'm extremely proud they go beyond they go beyond being an attraction. They go beyond being a zoo, right? And they are a place for education. Mm -hmm. They're a place for conservation. They have these incredible mission and the vision, and they see the zoo as just the entryway into allowing the community, especially kids, to create that connection, to create that bond, to create mm -hmm. that passion mm -hmm. for conservation, for protecting these species in the wild. I mean, really, that's what it is. It's it's not an attraction. It's not like you're going to get it, go to the zoo and ride an elephant. You know, you're going to go to the zoo and you're going to really learn, learn about yeah. these animals and how to protect them. That's just, man, your passion for this <laughs> is out of control. Okay. <laughs> but was it, was that's it, all good. Was though. the passion for the zoo more yeah. than Chambers Out? Because I might, I might it, have an issue. Slightly <laughs> better, but but nonetheless, uh, uh, I really appreciate that because yeah. I mean it, it comes through, and, and obviously these are very important topics yeah. and things. I mean, from an educational standpoint, and just learning more about you know what's going on with the animals and the environment and everything else. So. I really appreciate that, yeah, but I, but the, but your 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 passion is there. Mm -hmm. I know that's for sure. Down to my board. <laughs> <laughs> so you know you've you've talked to us about your educational, your your professional journey, some of what you have your passion when it comes to animals and the environment, things like that. What words of wisdom would you give to our audience? I mean, we have we have students out there, we have community members that are watching and uh, they want to know what, what is what is Brittany really thinking of that that needs to be shared uh, oh. that may help them whether it be uh, academically professionally uh, community wise my uh, my two things my two sayings mottos like words that I live by and especially when it comes to chamber staff you know when I when I started with this organization five years ago I was very young right mm -hmm. and I don't want to say that I was inexperienced but there was a lot that I had to learn and I had to to, to figure out sure. and so genuinely like in my heart of hearts because Chamber South has experienced a lot of success mm -hmm. in in the past few years really and and you know in the past five years Chamber South has really changed the organization has changed and mm -hmm. and yes I'm the president and CEO and yes I'm there every single day and I'm the one that's like really working but it's not just me and so one of the things that I really do live by is that no one accomplishes anything alone. Mm -hmm. And you're only as good as the people that you surround yourself with. That's so very true. I'm really fortunate, because like I said, I just have the best all around. My board of directors, my members, you know, with what I do with the chamber, my team, my staff, they're amazing. Everyone that is involved with this organization, when you think of who's involved with the Chamber of Commerce, they genuinely believe in the organization. And so I stand on their shoulders. Mm -hmm. You know, you always have to be get, give credit where it's due. Like nobody accomplishes anything alone. Mm -hmm. The oh, success yeah. of the chamber is a result. Not like yes, it's a result of the work that I've done over the past five years, and of course the board of directors that's in place right now. But it's also a huge result of the people that don't get a lot of the credit. That when it could have been really easy mm -hmm. to give up on the organization or stop believing, or there were some rough patches and there were some rocky roads, they didn't. They mm -hmm. they stuck true to it. They believed. They had faith. And really, truly, I and the entire organization, we stand on their shoulders. So nobody accomplishes anything alone, mm -hmm. and you're only as good as people that you surround yourself with. And I think that those are two really great things to always remember very true very true yeah. I could live by those as well <laughs> <laughs> what are your words of wisdom can I can oh, I, or what, I what, like what advice that, would you that'll give be me? that'll be another oh, show he's not gonna let me that, that'll him. be another show when you interview <laughs> me but we'll, we'll stick to you today but uh, but I, I do appreciate those words of wisdom of and I know that our audience does as well and Brittany thank you for thank joining you. us today thank you so much for um, having on me. keeping up with Kendall and uh, thank you for joining us today and uh, catch you next time <laughs>